we've seen over the years uh, uh, an increase in uh, elk human confrontations, um, which is essentially, you know, elk attacks on humans. A lot of the animals in the town site here uh, aren't even afraid of things like dogs. And it's a difficult man management problem, really. Today on Animal Tracks, these little elk went to town when more than 400 elk decided that Banff was a better home than the valley nearby. Biologists decided to help them relocate. We'll see if the plan worked. And this rare butterfly has only 10 days to mate before it dies. We'll find out more about the remarkable life and home of the maritime ringlet butterfly. Hi, I'm Jill Deacon. Welcome to Animal Tracks. We begin our show tonight with a rather unusual story of pest control. Most urban wildlife problems have at their center rather small animals. Raccoons in the chimney, maybe bats in the belfry. But in Alberta, the problem is with a much larger animal that's taken quite a shine to urban life. An animal that needed quite a bit of encouragement to head back to the wild. Every year, thousands of tourists come to Banff, Alberta for the spectacular scenery. And why not? Nestled in the Bow Valley, the Rocky Mountains ring the town, snow-tipped even in the fall. And you don't have to go for a hike on mountain trails to see wildlife up close either. In fact, all you have to do is stroll down the sidewalks or drive through the center of town, and chances are you'll see an elk. Scenic, yes, but also a bit of a problem. Good. That's why in early November, in the middle of a field near the edge of town, that's, that's good there. John Mackenzie is helping to build an elk trap. The total population in the whole valley is about 900, and around the town site we have about uh, 400 to 450. Over the last 10 years, a lot of changes have happened in the Bow Valley here. Um, one of the most important things was that wolves recolonized the Bow Valley in, in about the mid-1980s. And so what we think has happened here is that the elk are starting to use the town as a, as a refuge, as a predator avoidance strategy. Uh, and so what we found with our research is that wolves tend to avoid areas of high human use, where elk, on the other hand, uh, readily habituate to humans. The constant grazing by more and more elk has meant less food for other local animals. And there's another problem. During mating season, the males become aggressive, and during calving, so do the females. Having such a large ungulate in a human environment, we've seen over the years uh, a, an increase in uh, elk-human confrontations, uh, which is essentially, you know, elk attacks on humans. In a couple of weeks, when the snow falls, food will become harder for the elk to find around the town. So if enough hay is left, both outside and inside the pen, the elk will find their way here. That's the theory, anyway. The doors themselves will go uh, on the inside here and just run along some track. Uh, once we have it uh, all set up, it's an electronic trigger. We hit the trigger and, and the, the doors close on each one of these three large doors. And the important part about this trap is that it's, uh, it's fairly rounded here so that they, they run along the panels and as we can open up that door there and they'll just uh, make their way into, into the trap. It's important that they can't really see uh, all the way into the trap because if they can see where they're going they'll just automatically turn around and come out again. So if we just kind of have it open slightly they'll continue to, to make their way into the smaller uh, holding area. Mackenzie wants to trap up to 20 elk, put radio collars on them, then take them to another part of the valley, away from Bam. Once there, he'll track them to see if they stay put or come back to town. With the translocation, what we're trying to, to do is, is, really our main objective is to, to try to restore the, the sort of predator-prey dynamic and the natural distribution of elk in the Bull Valley. But before the transfer comes the capture. When we return, snow falls on Banff, and elk come to Mackenzie's pen. Uh, so what we do is we have the blind here, just so we can walk up without the animals knowing that we're actually coming close and we're not disturbing them. 
uh, because a switch for operating the trap doors only works in a few, uh, for about 100 meters, so we'll have to get pretty close. We'll find out what happens next when Animal Tracks continues. It's early morning in early December, about a month since John Mackenzie finished building his elk pen. Snow has come to Banff, Alberta, and the elk have come to Mackenzie's trap. What we're going to do here is just go up to our blind. Our trap is just on the other side. The animals are in the trap right now. Uh, so what we do is we have the blind here, just so we can walk up without the animals knowing that we're actually coming close and without disturbing them. Uh, because our switch for operating the trap doors only works from a few, uh, from about 100 meters, so we'll have to get pretty close. There are about a dozen animals inside, and when he's sure that all of them are safely away from the doors, Mackenzie uses the small remote control switch to spring the trap. Once the doors are shut, he can get a closer look at the animals he's caught. Well, it looks like we have about four adult cows, a couple of yearlings, and uh, one calf in our trap right now. And three of them have been previously tagged um, from research uh, just in the past. Now that he knows exactly what he's dealing with, Mackenzie and crew get to work. Among their tools, a homemade handy bit of invention. What we use for to keep the elk away, this is a classic um, Canadian. <laughs> I use a left tech, curve. I use, yeah. <laughs> Mine is also left. Uh, what it is, it's just a hockey stick um, drilled with some plastic bags on the end. And uh, the elk really don't like that. Um, it's one of these time-proven techniques. Armed with the hockey sticks and some rather sturdier protection. So Dave, do you want to work the door here? Mackenzie enters the pen and hopes to get the elk to cooperate. So what we're going to try to do here <coughs> is break off a small group of animals. Um, well, here goes one already. Okay. Okay, go for it. Well, that happened pretty quick. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much what we're trying to do with, with uh, very little effort on that, that time. Uh, is just work the animals on the, the outside of the, the trap here into the crowding area and then into the, finally into the smaller area. Okay, so what we've done here now is just captured the animal in these, these sliding doors and now I'm just going to slide a hood on. Once inside the final staging area, it's much easier for Mackenzie to work on the elk with the minimum amount of stress to the animal. So what we've got here is we've just put the the uh, little fleece cover over their eyes. Once their eyes are, are covered, they really settle down quite a bit. We've just put on a horse halter, um, just so that the animal relaxes. When we have the halter on, it just helps us keep the head up so that we can work on them. And uh, it's a lot safer for them and for us in case they get a bit too aggressive. The next step is the important one. Mackenzie screws on a specially designed radio collar so he can track the elk's movement. The transmitter hangs down in front by the elk's neck. At the side is what Mackenzie calls the breakaway. The screws that hold the collar together attach to a piece of old fire hose that will rot off in a couple of years. It means that the elk won't have to wear the collar forever, but Mackenzie can still get all the information he needs. Okay, so this will be number 271. After that, a numbered tag is placed on the elk's ear That's it. and it's moved into a waiting trailer. There she goes. She's in the trailer. It's never actually gone that easy before. <laughs> yeah. Throughout the morning, Mackenzie and his group collar and tag the rest of the elk. Okay, we all set here. You all set there, Dave? I'm gonna wanna get her up later for me. Okay. So one try from the other side, Dave. Go. 
It takes a few hours, but eventually the elk are all ready to go. All right, well, we've loaded the trailer up with about eight elk, and we're going to take them up to a place called Silver City. It's just uh, about 25 kilometers up the highway here, uh, and it's a big meadow. We've pre-baited it over the last couple of days to try to attract some uh, resident elk in the area, and uh, we'll just be releasing them there. What Mackenzie discovered in collaring the animals is that one of them has made this trip before. One was uh, taken up there, I guess, last Monday and uh, made a quick trip back to town. So we were fortunate enough to catch him again, so or catch her again, so we'll see what happens the second time here. Once released, the elk quickly explore their new home. And if some of these elk also come back to Banff, well, Mackenzie has a slightly different plan. Well, we're hoping that uh, these elk will integrate with some resident elk and uh, stay out here and just sort of stay in the, the Midbow Valley here and not return back to the town site. But uh, if that doesn't happen, uh, we're planning on translocating elk uh, to over to, into Kootenai National Park, which is uh, quite, a, quite a bit uh, further and over the next mountain range. And with their track record, it's a step Mackenzie is probably going to have to take in the years to come. Well, as it turns out, the elk that Mackenzie transported to Silver City didn't stay long at all. In fact, several of them were back in Banff within a couple of weeks. He had better success with the elk that were taken further down the valley. So far, none of those elk has turned up in town again.